Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. And today I'm going to do complete error test from TryHackMe. It says here, do you like reading? Do you like to go through tons of text? Error test is that what you need. So I don't like both of these, but this machine has Ansible and also some cool ways of breaking in that I think will be interesting. So we're going to try to see if we can find that. So we just need to find the two flags and I started the machine. First, let's see if we can ping. Sometimes ping isn't allowed on TryHackMe, but let's see if we can do that. Okay, this one responds to ping. So what that means is we can do an nmap scan. Uh, let's uh, do the boss. So I don't have to wait. All right, so as you can see, I see I got port 80, open 443. So that's kind of cool. Let's go and check these, both of these ports here. Start with just 80. Nmap is still running, but we can start interrogating some of these ports. All right, here's a default Apache page to be expected. This might also tell us information about like the version of Apache that's running, but it's just a default one. Let's see what, what is on HTTPS. Okay, same deal. We'll come back to this if we don't find anything interesting here. But let's check the results for more stuff. All right, we see 21 FTP and anonymous is allowed. So we will jump straight into that and see if we can find some stuff. It's anonymous, no password. Let's do it there. Okay. With pub. Duh. So I don't see anything in here. Next, we'll move on to the other ports. So far, 80 is not showing us anything. Anonymous is not showing us anything. And 443 is not showing us anything. NetBIOS is not going to give us much. I see Samba share uh, with a work group here. So 445. There we go. Okay, so to enumerate for SMB on port 445, we say SMB map. Let's give them a blank user, the blank password on the host. And let's see. If we will be able to see any shares so this should just try now authentication on that web group if smb map finds anything we'll go to smb client okay so i see a temporary share uh we have read only so let's see, use smb client for this one okay so here for start it's temporary share but there is a space in the name so i think if we put a space here that should also work so let's see uh, there's no password. Anonymous login was successful to the temporary share. So if you do a dir. Oh boy. This is what they were talking about when they said there's going to be a lot of files. So here's a bunch of chapters. Let's get out of here first. Make a directory. I'll name it loot. Let's go to that directory. Okay, now let's go back. I'm doing this so that I can... Uh, loot everything and put it in a folder that I can clean up after. Okay, so here we want the want to mask and uh, prompt off. We want prompt off because we don't want to be asked for anything. Recurse on. That way we can download folders and then and get star. Now we are looting everything. This will probably take a while. We're just going to get everything and hopefully we can use uh, some best scripting to go through everything or if you don't find much i would like to search for the word password recursively throughout this whole thing just in case there is a simple password all right so we have a bunch of uh, text files and things like that so our work is cut out for us okay now if i say let's see a bunch of chapters here and message to see me on the text see the message simeon the text says simeon is that's a username and theodore will sign this message so those are two users uh, okay stop messing with your home directory stop messing with your home directory in the home directory a user stores their ssh keys says you're moving files and directories insecurely so that means that simeon might be moving their home directory insecurely so if they're moving their home directory that means that their password is in one of these uh, home directories is in their bash rc and also their uh, id rsa keys uh, so dot ssh which is why we saw it here the password is 
insecure. So there's two problems. Insecure password and moving home directory incorrectly. So okay. With that, let's search recursively in all these. Because if I do chapter one, I see multiple paragraphs. I'm, there's no way in here I'm going to dig through every single one of these. So I would like to uh, search recursively. I asked chat, chat GPT like, hey, how do I search for a word recursively from multiple directories? And chat GPT is like, hey, here's how you can do it. So what is the word that I want to search? In search for the word password from here, going in. Okay, it only found that word in here. So let's search for another one. Uh, RSA. All right, look at that. I see begin key, end key. So they're in chapter seven, text two. So that was easy. Thanks, Chat GPT. Why is the, why is the key in chapter seven? It, I don't know CTF stuff. Okay, so if we look at this, and I say key, it is encrypted. Oh come on. Okay, now we need to do the SSH to John thing to get it uh, cracked, which is super simple. We've done it before. So let's copy this. Oh, do it here, Nano. This is the encrypted one. So let's name it accordingly. And paste in here. Make sure that we don't have any spaces. So here's my encrypted key. Let's crack it with um, RSA to John or SSH key to John, whatever that tool is. All right, so... SSH to John, and then we need to output that to ID. No, this is going to be just hash dot text for John. Cat hash dot text. There it is. So now let's crack that with John and Roku dot text. Okay, so here's my Roku dot text. I will save other ones for hash cat, by the way. So is it John? And it's word list. No, it's dash dash word list equals to this one. And the hash file. See, we might be able to get lucky since they said the password was weak and crack the password in. Oh, that was easy. Get testing one, two, three. So we have a username for the person that we're talking about. We have the key and we cracked it. Now, let's see what we can do here. So should we be able to just SSH? Minus I, ID underscore RSA, Simeon at our host. Okay, so SSH using our encrypted key, and we need this password here, testing one, two, three. If everything works, we should be able to SSH. So say yes. Ask for a password, it's testing one, two, three. Oh, the per permissions are also bad. So that, this will not work. I think it's mod 644. Uh, mod 644. That's, that's the one that works. We've seen this before. Really? 644 is not cool? Is this just 600 then? How does this one it was 644? Okay. Now, don't mess with me. All right. They want the password testing one to three. All right. We're in. That was easy. Let's do sudo minus L. That's the first thing we do here. Oh, they want the password for Simeon, and we are in with the key. So that's not going to work. Let's go to the home. Search home, ls. So there is automation, Simeon and Theodore. Oh, for automation, now nobody has access to that. Theodore, nobody has access to that. So, so now uh, we need to go to our OneNote for automation. We can use Lin P's, but I like to start by hand, and then if Lin P's doesn't work, we can go there. So I'm opening my OneNote. We need to start with SURDs, and uh, SURDs fails. Let's try to find capabilities. My notes are moving to Obsidian, by the way, so this won't be around for too long. Previous for Linux, here's the SURDs. There we are. So here, what we're looking for is anything new, like usernet.ctl sounds really good, but I'm not sure if that's something we can 
are messed with. Most of these look normal, including Chrome tabs, but Usernet here, if I don't see any capabilities or anything like that, we can look at Usernet, but that's suspicious. You're looking for something like a tool that was, looks like it was installed by a user. So, and here we're also looking for anything that looks out of place. Like ping is always there. Air, air ping. Uh, clock diff, I've not seen that before. But I see this one is net admin. And this one, ping is fine, but this one, a TCP dump, oh, that's that's just a tool that we can use for dumping tr traffic on, on on the interface. So TCP dump allows us to just read. So if we have capabilities on TCP dump, that means that we might be able to run TCP dump and see everything from all interfaces. So I see if zero here. I also see local host. I mean loop loopback interface. So let's see if there's something that's running. Minus ANTP. Okay, I'm just trying to see if there's anything that's running that's funny looking that I can use for TCP dump. Uh, PSPy would does this better. Okay, I'm just going to run TCP dump dash i. Okay, so TCP dump does listen. So I'm listening on loop back here. Oh, I was about to move on. Okay, somebody's sending echo ICMP traffic. Let's watch for for a little bit and see what happens. Wait, I saw something. I saw something other than this ICMP traffic here. I saw something. Uh, I th oh, this local host. Yeah, I see HTTP traffic here. Local host HTTP with some flags. Okay. So something is happening with HTTP and that's not me. I see a GET request here. Test auth. Go back to that loopback interface one more time. Let's go. So let's wait for that HTTP traffic to show up again because it looks like there's something uh, going on here. Probably like a automated user interface or a cron job or something. There we go. Now I'm getting something. Okay, so here I see something. It says, uh, if you can read this, the curl command was successful. So somebody's running a curl command. What am I supposed to see here? Oh, there's basic auth here. Basic auth. Is that base64 encoded password? That would be silly. But since I got that base64, let me go here. Echo that. Let's decode it. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's good. And I don't know that it's Theodore. And that's the password. So let's see if we can SSH. So SSH is Theodore. And let's give them this password here. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, we're in. Pseudo minus L. That should do us a favor and we uh, see that we can run automation uh, without any password is the automation without a password uh, we can run this here let's check the permissions on this file that file okay so that is owned by root we do not have much permissions on that okay so that's unfortunate we cannot modify the script, but let's see if we can read it. All right. So the script says, um, so it's going to the Ansible folder. Okay. So there's Ansible, which is cool. Great for the OS EP. User being Ansible playbook. <laughs> so we just want to run Ansible playbook. We're playing a, we're running any of the playbooks. That's kind of silly that are in this folder. So we can create our own playbook and put it in here. Or we can find one that's writable. Because it's, it's just using a wildcard. So let's go to that folder. I hope we can write in that folder. LS minus LA. We might not be able to write in here. As you can see, yeah, these ones are owned by automation. So that's unfortunate. Let's see um, if there's something else. 
Okay, I'm trying to ask Google, hey, let's find writable Ansible playbooks in pen testing. So we are in the playbooks. Let's go back one. Let's go to my to, to our roles. Because we cannot write into those. Okay. So in here we have the tasks and vars are the only interesting things. We can check the tasks and vars. We can also check the host for any passwords. So Yes, instead of going to roles, let's let's check the host just in case there's a anything in there. Like the encrypted passwords. This is a very lazy inventory file. 10, 10, 46. Any you can do lateral movement if you can find some things in here. Okay. So let's go to our roles. Okay, and let's check here. Now tasks. Uh, so everything is owned by this automation person. Am I doing this wrong? I guess I'm, I want to find writable. We have to have a writable. Find from this path here. Writable un Ansible playbooks. Okay, so that's the syntax I, I was looking for. It needs to say writable. So we can find opt rows that. Okay, so we need to. Uh, Readme.txt is useless. So let's use vi for that file and see if we can write that file. Okay, so here, since I can write in here, I don't, I don't need to change anything. But if they are running any commands, that would be nice. So I need a playbook that maybe will change the SUID for the root. Or I can add a new user, uh, whatever I, I want here. So... Uh, let's just insert this somewhere here. Being very careful not to mess with this playbook. Especially its syntax is very, very finicky. So it's name, command. So my command here is going to be... I know this is gross, but it's a very easy way. Plus S, such bin... Okay, bin bash. Let's set it as your idea. Okay, so this command here, in order for it to actually work, it needs to run a sudo. And it's u plus s um, bin bash. Okay, that should do it. ls minus l slash bin bin bash. We do not have an suid. So you need to execute it and set it. Okay, now let's auto, uh, now let's execute this, the script by saying yes, sudo as user automation. I would like to run our script. Infra dot as code dot sh. Let's see if this will give us everything. It says authentication to that can be established. Yes, that's the first time we're running it. So it ran. 10, 10, 10, item register grip. Listen, okay, that's something that we had nothing to do with us. Okay, let's check. Let's minus L such bin bash. We should now have an SUID set. There we go. If I just, I should have copied this <laughs> and then um, bash. Where am I? Bash minus P. I think that's the actual command. There we go. We are now root. So that was a cool, neat way of privilege escalation using Ansible. I really like that. Let's um, cd slash root. Let's get root dot text. Okay. And let's also give them the user flag. I don't know which user now. Was it in um, Theodore? All right. Thank you very much for being here. This was, um, we're building on a streak to seven days. So now we are at two days. But this was awesome. Thank you very much. And this, I hope you complete this machine. Otherwise, see you next time.